Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Guys, the last few days have been absolutely huge for Wall Street, BlackRock, the ETFs. And yet we still continue to see uh, Bitcoin kind of struggle at that price range we've set a few days ago. Uh, it's just been kind of going sideways. And unfortunately, we're down a bit today. Um, so I'm going to get into all of that. We're going to look at the charts. Uh, I'm going to give you guys the news on, on what uh, BlackRock and the other ETFs are doing, um, as well as some other news. But before we get into all of that, guys, um, again, I am kind of spotlighting Riverview Rescue here. Um, as you can see, this is on Facebook. Uh, I do leave this link to their Facebook in the descriptions of my videos this month. Um, as well, if you if you want to help support these guys in what they're doing to help help these animals, uh, you I do have their link tree. That's this page uh, linked in the description of my video as well. You can go over them there, contact them, uh, just donate via Venmo or donate um, via PayPal here if you click that bottom one, which this page you can just you don't need to have a PayPal. You can just enter in your debit card or credit card, donate five or ten bucks. Um, always very much appreciated, guys. OK, so let's get into it. Um, first of all, uh, we do have Bitcoin's birthday today. So Bitcoin edges. Uh, this is from the block. It says Bitcoin edges close to all time high as it marks its sweet 16th birthday, guys. The uh, Bitcoin white paper came out October 31st, Halloween of 2008. So happy birthday, Bitcoin. Uh, sweet 16 should be a good one. Unfortunately, you know, as I said, we're kind of down today, but this this bull run is just starting, guys. So hang in there. Um, OK, so let's get into <coughs> excuse me. Let's get into the news um, as far as uh, the Bitcoin ETFs and BlackRock, guys. If you look right here, um, I'm actually going to zoom in on this a bit for you. Maybe. Let's see. There we go. OK, so you can see right here, October uh, 30th, yesterday, and BlackRock is this first uh, ledger down. They did eight hundred and seventy two million dollars yesterday. Inflow. <laughs> Almost a billion dollars just from BlackRock alone. Everybody else, you know, Arc, Arc, uh, Fidelity. Um, you know, Bitwise was the the one that had the outflow yesterday, but everybody else just had pretty measly numbers. But BlackRock almost selling or, or taking in a, almost a billion dollars, pushing a billion dollars yesterday. And the day before they had 642. Um, so the past two days in total, we've we've had the ETFs take in 870 million dollars uh October 29th and 893 million dollars uh yesterday. So both yesterday and today the price has not really reflected those huge numbers uh that the ETFs have just swallowed up guys. Now of course these these ETFs do buy over the counter, right? So they don't go on to exchanges and, you know, type in and get into their Coinbase account and just buy on the spot market, which would just send the price soaring. Instead, they go over over the counter, uh, you know, doing private deals with people outside of the private um, or of, of the spot market, which does eventually move the market. But it does take some time. Um, and I'm going to show you some numbers that are are pretty, pretty staggering here in a minute. But, you know, eventually, I think I think these guys are. I mean, they could have to, you know, they have to if they 
get inflows on Wall Street and the, the OTC market dries up, they will have to buy spot market and just send the price soaring instantly. Um, so we do have that as far as the price action, you know, kind of an explanation on why it's trading sideways. Usually, and this is what's kind of weird, guys, is usually when when these ETFs are seeing massive inflows like they have the last few days, usually the spot market moves with that to a, in a sense, um, you know, people will see that and they'll start buying on the spot market, which will send the spot market higher. higher. So whether that be other OTC people re, uh, you know, restocking up to sell to them later or, or just retail or whales, whatever it be, usually it kind of follows, you know, at least the, the ETF inflows are taken into account with the price actions. So, um, it's just been kind of a weird past couple days because we've, we've seen huge days for the ETFs and really nothing for, for the spot price. So, uh, but as I mentioned, guys, that OTC market could be drying up. And, uh, this is an article from Coindesk, uh, just released a few days ago. And guys, this, it says Bitcoin approaches Sorry about this. Uh, Bitcoin approaches all time highs as daily OTC desk inflows drop to years lows. Uh, and this is this is coming from the group CryptoQuant. Um, so as you can see here, guys, th this uh, purple is kind of the OTC uh, from miners and just since the 1st of October, we've absolutely dropped down almost, you know, all the way to nothing. We're, we're really just barely getting anything in those OTC desks from the miners. Um, but, it, you know, even further down into this, guys, um, with, the, with these charts that are a little more encompassing um, than just the miners, you can see... Um, you know, the OTC balance is just, just plummeting down right now. Um, right here, you can just see that, you know, we're, we're actually going into this, this, uh, negative spot right here. And <laughs> I, you know, these ETFs, they just keep swallowing up Bitcoin guys. And where are they going to get it? have to fill it if they sell it on on wall street they do have to fill that within one day uh it's the t1 settlement period that they they've set and if they can't get it over the counter they have to buy it on the spot so um you know this just kind of signals this massive or this this decline in over the counter um bitcoin really just kind of signal signals kind of a squeeze that could be happening here shortly. Um, and I don't see them stopping. You know, if you go back to these, these inflows, you know, obviously the big one is this first, um, this first column, which is BlackRock. And you just look back over this month and they've just been swallowing up hundreds of millions of Bitcoin every single day. Um, no outflows. They're just, and that goes back to, to BlackRock and their, their stance on Bitcoin uh, as it being a, a flight to safety, a flight to quality, um, a kind of a hedge against the dollar, against inflation, against this endless money printing that the government is doing. So, you know, BlackRock is out there selling the crap out of this, uh, you know, ETF. So they're not stopping. And, you know, eventually it's, it's kind of like a rubber band, guys. You know, you try and suppress the price, whether it be over the counter or um, by shorting or manipulating the market here or there. 
in in different ways. It's like a, it's like an elastic band. And they did this with the gold ETFs also back in 2004, I believe, is when the, the gold ETFs went live. They suppressed the market while they loaded up for 10 months. And then they couldn't hold it anymore. And it was that elastic band. They, they tried to suppress it and suppress it and suppress it. And eventually they couldn't hold it back anymore. And it snapped. And the price of gold just went up for eight straight years. Um, so, guys, I just I <laughs> I'm pretty excited myself about about uh, the next few years of Bitcoin, the next year at least. Um, as far as the having cycle goes, we do have an, a year left of really that parabolic move uh, that comes every four years happens from now. Till next, uh, from my calculations, I, I did three separate averages and it all led me to the week of October 12th through the 19th as being the top of, of the market. If we do have a top this time, guys, as I said again, you know, going onto this new, this new market, Wall Street, and having these ETFs and just seeing what it did to gold, you know, if we could go up. It's possible. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but we could break the four year cycle this year or this cycle uh, with with Wall Street coming in. I really don't see us having that 80, 80 percent, you know, crypto winner down year like we usually do. Uh, but even then, we we might not have a bear market like gold did for eight straight years or so, you know? So I'm not saying that's, I'm not leaning that way myself, but um, it's definitely a possibility, guys. We could break that four-year cycle and just have nothing but a, a bull market for the next several years. So anyways, guys, just some positivity, even though we we're down today. Uh, I do want to jump over to the charts really quick and kind of show you guys what's going on. Um, so as you can see, uh, you know, right, right about here is where uh, market open happened today. And we've just been kind of plummeting down. Uh, we have had some longs, you know, once we did get up into this where we broke out of, of this uh, downward channel and we did set that higher high finally. We did have a lot of people, unfortunately, um, playing with leverage and going long uh, down here. And that's what I'm seeing is, is, you know, the market and these big whales. Here's the thing, guys. If you're playing with leverage on uh, crypto and Bitcoin, all of that information is pretty public. You can see where all of these longs are. And if if major whales that have huge amounts of volume and, and um, money to throw around, if they see that the if the volume's dropping down like it did right in here, um, and they have enough weight to throw around and they see a major long block that they can just sell off and, and liquidate you out of your money. They can, it's literally, they can just steal your money. Like going leveraged on Bitcoin and crypto is so, so risky, guys. Um, you know, it's public information. These, these whales and these big, this big money can see where your money's at. And they, if they hit it, they can steal it from you. And it just flushes you out. It goes down a little bit lower than what they sold for, what they pushed that price down for, and they can buy it for lower than what they sold. And it's it's just them manipulating that that low volatility and stealing your money out of those long positions. So it's, you know, honestly, uh, you, leveraging long, I I feel is is super risky. Um, I don't think it's as bad as shorting the market uh, because, you know, shorting something in my mind is just a little unethical. If you're leveraging, you're just kind of taking your own risk. But 
shorting just kind of goes against everything that markets should stand for, in my opinion. So anyways, guys, we I do see this as kind of a uh, a flush out of of those long positions. Um, let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm going to go over to the Bitcoin liquidation heat map. Um, give me just a second. See, this is coin glass. So here's what I'm talking about, guys. Uh, so this is just yes. the 24 hour um, thing, but you can see right here, we had all of these longs. And this is what I'm saying. This is public information. When whales see that there's a major <laughs> long block and they can manipulate the price down to that, they can literally steal your money that's just sitting here in these long positions, leveraged long positions. So bam, now you've just lost all that money. The ways whales will usually buy that back up once they hit their acceptable level and will we'll pop up back up from there. Uh, now we do have these shorts above here, but guys, here's the interesting thing about the shorts. It's, um, if we go back to the six month chart, you can see just yesterday or a few days ago when we we popped above that we sh we liquidated all of these shorts all of these shorts that went clear back six months or you know five six months ago so um sorry shorts sorry sorry bears uh i don't sympathize with you if you got wrecked from shorting bitcoin um but that's the thing is, guys, in, in this short term uh, period right now, we did have a lot of longs right here that just got liquidated. And once they hit that, all, all these whales have to do is sell off to hit this price. And all of these longs are liquidated. It'll shove the price down lower. And whatever these guys sold their their Bitcoin at clear up here can buy down here. And just basically what they've done is they've stolen all of this money from people that got a bit too greedy. So just a warning, if you're thinking about getting on some of these exchanges and, and using leverage, um, it's not a very smart idea in my opinion, you know, buy and hold. There's a reason we have that HODL meme. Hold on for dear life. Like, don't get flushed out of your positions. Okay, so back to the charts. Um, just a few levels that I want to point out to you. Now, this green line right here, this should act as a bit of support. This is uh, around the level of, of the all-time high from 2022 or 2021, sorry. Uh, so that could be an area that we come back down to and bounce off of. If we do turn that level into support, that would be an absolutely great thing. We haven't, you know, we've busted out above it just recently and we haven't retested that and, and turned it into support yet. So this is actually completely healthy. If we come down to that and bounce off of it, completely healthy. Um, even though we're looking at it today and we're, you know, all bummed out about the price action today, that would be an absolutely great thing to just bounce off that and turn that into support. Now, this yellow uh, line here is the upper bounds of that channel, that descending channel that we were in for about six months. I'll just uh, turn over to the um, daily to kind of show you that so this goes clear back you know this is when we the etfs launched and we we set this on all team high uh but this is kind of that upper bound of of where we hit there it actually looks like i've got that moved a bit um yeah it should be right about there and you can you can see if we go back 
uh, zoom back into just the recent, what we've done recently, you can see we just hit that line and it acted as resistance for a few days, actually, you know, a, a week or so. And we, we, we uh, rejected off of that line, came back down, and then we finally came back up and broke it, uh, uh, above it three or four, four days ago. So um, again, if we go back over to the hourly, if, you know, if we fall through this, this high that we set back in 2021 and don't turn that into resistance, the next level I'd be looking at is that upper bounds of that uh, descending channel. So that would put us at about 69,000. But if we, even if we drop all the way down to 69,000, if we hit that mark and bounce off of that, again, guys, this is going to be extremely healthy for Bitcoin and, and the parabolic move that we're going into. Um, and guys, that's the thing. Even though we are going, you know, you, you'll hear me say parabolic, uh, the banana zone, whatever people call it. Um, it, it when you talk about it, it, it sounds like nothing but up, right? But it's not. Uh, there will be things it's exactly like what we're doing right now. You know, you'll go through these massive upswings. And then it'll consolidate and you'll be super bummed that you're not continuing that crazy upwards thing for several days. And then we might even drop like we are now and we'll hit some kind of support and bounce and we'll be back in the euphoria stage. But the, the parabolic moves in Bitcoin for this last year of the halving cycle, really, it, it is choppy. It's volatile. But overall, it goes to the upside. Um, so just expect that, you know, last last bull run, we were in the parabolic move and I'd make, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in a day. Um, I say make, but I never sold. So, um, you know, the price would gain tens of thousands of dollars in my portfolio per day. And then the next day I'd be down, you know, ten thousand dollars or you know whatever and i'd be kind of bummed about it and i'd be you know <laughs> uh as funny as it sounds i'd i i got into this thing where i'd start singing the sun will come out tomorrow you know from annie the musical and uh and then you know a few days later we'd be pumping again so um you know i talk about these parabolic moves and it is the part of the cycle that's that's really fun. It's a lot of excitement, a lot of upside, but you're never going to get away from these, these down days. We are always going to have those, even during this parabolic move, you're going to have days where you're like, ah, oh, and you're going to question yourself. So, uh, hang in there, just have a plan. Like I always, I always stress on this channel, have a plan, have a plan, uh, whether that be time frame or price. Um, you know, you're going to hold until this price or you're going to hold until this date or whatever your plan may be. Have a plan. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. And yeah, just just hang in there. I'll be here, you know, making more videos now um, to kind of bring you guys this kind of content to, to kind of show you where, what levels we should be looking at, showing you the news. So uh, if you guys like the video, please um, subscribe, like the, like the video if you could. Um, smash that thumbs up for me. Uh, it helps the channel, helps me out, helps me know what, if I'm doing an okay job with these videos, if you're liking it. And as always, guys, very much appreciated that you guys would take time out of your day and, and watch my videos. So thank you. Thank you. And I will see you guys in the next video.